Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Vinland Saga episode 11. Last time on Vinland Saga, we had a really solid episode, like one of the better episodes of Vinland Saga for the last few, which is saying something because they've been rather consistent. But this this past last episode, episode 10, was like a little bit of a notch above, in my opinion. Just just like a little bit. There was some some really gorgeous visuals, some some really gorgeous use of like a dream sequence and just just cool stuff. And then beyond that, we had a, a really interesting conversation between Ashlad and uh and and Thorfinn and this whole kind of awesome thematic interlay I don't know what I'm looking for for a word there but there's a better word for it um th this awesome theme interwoven through the episode of um like fatalism and belief that the end times are coming and that one might as well go out with a bang but also that that like everything is coming to an end and so our, our actions here and now are all that we have which was just kind of kind of fascinating and kind of cool and I hope that it keeps going um, and coming off of the, the end of that, Ashalad made an interesting decision, a really interesting decision to kill a messenger being sent, uh, to gather aid from the main army to help out, uh, Canute and Frendos to kill that messenger, prevent the word from traveling so that he and his can go and get theirs, uh, We'll have to see how this plays out, but he is going with a, a his small strike force in order to defeat a much larger army, although it's not necessarily a defeat. This is an in-and-out, like, SWAT team rescue mission. This is this is an extraction. So, uh, much smaller party probably is all that we need, and we need our stealthiest and, and sneakiest and most, hey, look, we, there's somebody around the corner, and now they're dead people— which seems to be Thorfinn. Uh, so I'm expecting that, that Thorfinn is going to be maybe kind of spearheading this mission in a weird way. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I am extremely interested in seeing how this plays out. I'm also hoping that we get some kind of more information on, on Canute. Any kind of actions taken by Canute. Any kind of speeches made by Canute. Anything from Canute. Because Canute is right now becoming like the center of this maelstrom of conflict and i would like to know what that center consists of so i, I want to know who this person is we've got a surprising inf amount of information for a character that has not spoken yet just from uh other characters talking about canute and just the general like the the appearance speaks volumes the 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 armor the 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 beautiful face and features and hair and the seeming extreme piety, the, the very pious nature of this character, speaks volumes, but it doesn't speak enough for me. I want more. I want more. I need it. In any case, Vinland has been continuing to be really solid, and yay! Solid things! Good shows are good! Yay! Um, so I'm excited for this next episode. Let's go ahead and jump on into it, and I won't blather too much here at the beginning. So I've got the episode up and ready to go. There will be two versions of this reaction. You can find the picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up in the corner, uh, down in the description, and you can find the timer-based version up on YouTube. You're probably watching it right now if you're hearing me say this. Uh, the picture-in-picture -picture version will have the video in it, but it will not have discussion at the end. So if you want that, stick around till the end of the timer-based version on YouTube, which will have the discussion at the end, but no video in it because YouTube. Um, so if you do want to use the timer-based version and sync up with your own copy of Vinland Saga, you can do that. Uh, just get it ready because there will be a beep beep timer to count you down to zero and it will be coming at you right now. To win the engine. OP start. Okay.
Hmm. Oh, hi. Those are really good looking leaves, just saying. <laughs> Mm. Mm, that sounds good. All of these are good things. Mm hmm. Uh. <laughs> oh, this guy. His name starts with an A. That's his strength, though. That's the whole point. But yeah, all right. From your perspective, makes perfect sense. So, is this how we transition to Canute? Yeah. <laughs> You've got one with you, don't you? Music fades. Speak? Nothing. Nothing at all. Thorgal doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Again, this silence speaks volumes. He is getting a little bit Shakespearean up in here. <laughs> Yes. Correct. Probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Endless battle. Endless feasting. Ooh, and the symbolism. Canute as male Valkyrie. First time we see his eyes in this episode. Oh, hi. An alcoholic priest.
It's a cool shot. <laughs> There's nothing funny about that. But I see why it would be for him. The attack. Mm hmm. Jesus. I don't believe you. Don't believe you. Yep, <laughs> exactly. All right, two axes. Whoosh, whoosh. You're just here to be for fun. Hmm. Ambush the ambushers. Nah, y'all are fucked. You will die. You will all die. Follow your orders. Yeah, we don't actually have two thousand. That's why we sent him over to your side. Because we're not holding the fuck back. Oh man. Darko, I fucking love you. <sighs> Inbound whirlwind of death. Uh oh. That's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't scare us. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. Casks of explosives? Oil? They wouldn't have black powder at the moment, would they? No. Okay, I said whirlwind to death, but holy shit! That poor tree! <laughs> Canute, what you gonna do? Or is Canute a pacifist? It's possible.
What's in the barrels? What's in the barrels? Oil? Tar? Flames rolling down the hill? Oh shit. It's all- they're just setting fire. A control burn and they're trapped. Oil. Okay, okay, okay. Brilliant. A raging inferno. And a wall of it. Not if you've touched the oil. Right here, buddy. <laughs> Did they encircle them? This is a weapon. Mmm. Mmm. Love those close ups. That's why we started on the dry leaves on the ground everywhere. Whoosh. Wouldn't count on it. He'll just spin around with his axes really fast. <laughs> Whoosh. Ah. Through the fire and the flames, let's go. <laughs> it's a well-trained horse if it'll run through fire well-trained horse <laughs> it's about it oh never mind it's charred you crazy motherfucker trust him to do what Ashalad wants when Ashalad makes use of his manipulative abilities yeah an idiot who's not afraid. Yep. Hello. Scared one. There you go. Oh, no, you just announced the location of your. Uh, no. <laughs> You fucking idiot. Who are these? This is a, a third group, isn't it? Oh, no, it's still Thorkel's men. Okay, okay, okay. Rest are fair game, though.
Hi, Thorfinn. Cool cut. Welcome to the fray. No, that wasn't Thorfinn. Oh, he jumped. Okay. Hello, Thorfinn. Death. You can try. <laughs> you can certainly try. Uh... Uh. Rogues, man. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Bonus action, hide, sneak attack. Boom! <laughs> I'm sorry. I love this piece of music being used here. Very interesting. Okay. This strikes me as a rather important meeting. But. You have no choice but to trust this kid. Hi, Thorkel. The hand? Yep. <laughs> Rematch! <laughs> uh-oh. A big uh-oh. 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 Nope. Mm-mm. You would lose. Yep. Respect. Hi. You fought with him. Looks more like his mother. Oh. Oh, that's so badass. Fucking rogues and evasion, man. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That is a tall order, literally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh and the laughing ceases oh hello Trust was warranted. Mm. 
All right. Hmm. formal Scarred or just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Plays back into. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk about that in the discussion. All right. There's a lot to love in this episode, I think. Um, some things that weren't immediately apparent when they appeared, but then played into other things in the episode. The the first of which is literally the first of anything. Um, well, I guess we do start with the OP in the episode. Uh, I'm always interested in whether the OP is first or there's like something uh, before it, like a little, little stinger section before it. Always interested in that. Um, I was wondering why there was so much effort put into, seemingly put into these leaves, the dry leaves on the ground. Just wondering. And then you realize when they set the fire that it's all been set up for you, that this entire forest that they're going through is tinder on the floor everywhere. So, snap a match. Whoosh. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, being, being a Southern Californian who has grown up with the threat of forest fires constantly and has had multiple fires come within a few miles of, of where I live. Like, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary stuff. Then we, we have them bantering and, and chatting, and it reminds me more than anything of the way that Ashalad banters and chats with his, with his people, except that when, when Ashalad is doing it, it seems mm, calculated. It seems intentional and uh, a, a, a calculated way of interacting with his people. Everything Ashlad does seems calculated to me, especially interpersonal things and things that sway people's opinion or beliefs to his side. Thorkel strikes me as a lot more, um, and this is going to sound strange, but a lot more innocent. And we'll we'll get to this a little bit later because uh, Ragnar actually calls him out on it in an interesting way that I think rings true. Um, so we'll talk about it a little bit later. But Thorkel strikes me as a little bit more innocent and a little bit more genuine in his in his in his banter with his men. Um, he's much more one of the guys, although he stands head and shoulders above them, literally and figuratively. Am I out of lead in this pencil? No, thank goodness. Oh, it just fell out. I think I am. Oh, nope, we're good. Cool. Um. Okay. So Thor Thorkel's banter and, and general confidence is, is 
interesting and pretty cool. Uh, the the men sort of relaxing, talking about the well. You have to you have to imagine that that traveling raiders end up experiencing a lot more of the world than people who stay static. People who stay static and live in a village their entire lives experience what's in that village, and maybe traders that pass through, maybe raiders that pass through, but. They're not going to experience things like English beer and cheddar from cheddar. Like, they're not going to experience these things if they're just stuck in one place. And so the Vikings, for all of their, uh, or, or the Normans, uh, for, for all of their um, their unculturedness, their barbaric ways, are also exposed to a lot of culture that they appreciate without necessarily knowing it, which is kind of cool. They they. they gather interesting things from the world and spread them uh which is which is strange and interesting and then women uh and then we end up with christianity is nice and i fucking love this this is this is amazing and this leads us into our conversation about christianity which then flows into uh uh addressing canute thorkel addressing canute which is which is interesting which is cool um so we move through here yeah, they're always telling you to do that, this or that, that or this, and uh, it's it's kind of awesome. It's it's like Batman versus. It's like it's like who would win, Batman or Spider Man, if they ended up fighting? Yeah, um, except with your gods, which is well, it's very much the same thing. Um, like I I see I see superheroes as the very modern secular version of of gods and and goddesses, but. Uh, that's that's very much what this plays out as and what it seems to be to me and it's it's kind of cool because the vikings are just like nah man thor's would uh, thor, not thor's thor would beat the shit out of jesus that guy's so weak look at him he's just so weak on the cross um i'm not a religious person but i'm i'm familiar with and interested in a lot of religion and that's that's very funny to me and it's a very very humorous but also it rings true way of looking at Looking at another religion from the outside, it seems like a silly group of stories, right? It always does. Um, but you imagine that that these these statements that they're making and the comparisons that they're making would make a, a, a genuine priest or a genuine worshiper like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, I got to I got to explain to you. Spider-Man is way better than Batman. I swear he's going to like he's going to like web sling your batarangs. It's not going to work, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, it turns to let's ask a Christian directly. So we yell out. And uh, another thing that I noticed when this happened is we slowly fade the music out. <laughs> and all of the the general like crowd noise. Down it goes. Jesus of the gods in Asgard. All right, and then Ragnar. I I really like the way he brings his most distinct distinctive feature into frame before anything else. It's just because of the nature of the shot. But as he stands and turns around, his like pointed pointed head uh, appears first. And <laughs> Thorgil's face is amazing. Yeah, he does not give a shit. But he's doing this for reasons. Like a maiden in love. And he gets all, all dramatic with it. <laughs> uh, Thorkel just continues to grow on me. You're huge for a girl. <laughs> right, okay. You guys are crazy. You know nothing but war. You're all going to die. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, and they agree. Like, why wouldn't they? Because death is not the end for them. Like... Beyond the Christian interpretation, death is the goal for a Norman warrior. Which is pretty fucking cool. And I love how we, we had uh, scenes of not quite as hardened people chatting and throwing around beer. And then we, we turn to a couple of guys who look like they've seen some shit when he says that. All right, and then we pull up we pull up the Valkyries, and uh, this becomes instantly interesting to me because the the visual representation that we get of the Valkyries is very much reminiscent of the representation of Canute. They've got these low helms uh, over their brow. They've got the wings on the sides, the long flowing blonde hair. Um, 
it strikes me as as a representation of Canute as a Valkyrie and something that that could be interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily intentional, but it seems like it would have to be. I just I just don't know. And how you die. Right, here we go. This is where, where Ragnar calls him out. You're so old-fashioned. Then he calls him a child. You poor thing. You're just a child, Thorkel. Which strikes me as true, and that's that's why I wrote it down. It, it's it's interesting, but it's like, hmm, hmm. I don't know how to explain what I'm thinking for this one. Something about it rings true. Some something about Thorkel just like he is a an entity that exists and thrives on the battlefield we see it in the same episode when he becomes a whirlwind of fucking death uh but but he's an entity that that exists on the battlefield and takes what he can but i i i feel like it it's correct to call him childlike as though he has little experience of the outside world of the the nature and machinations of of politics and of people beyond soldiers and 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 warriors and soldiers like interactions it rings true in a weird way and it also it doesn't hurt that Thorkel is rather childish in his behavior uh except when he gets very serious and then he gets very fucking serious and you get dead needless to say i really like Thorkel. really like Thorkel. So, uh, again, Canute still has not spoken a word, not even a breath, not even a whisper, which says something. And then we have the priest freak out, the bloodshot eyes, and it is revealed that the priest, I, it may have been revealed earlier, I just don't remember it super well, but that he is a painful alcoholic for sure. And then the answer that he gives is, whichever one made beer. Whichever one made booze, which of course cracks them all up. And then we zoom slowly in on this shot, and then Thorkel realizes something's wrong. And everyone stops and listens and watches and waits. They're ready for this. And then this is fucking badass. And a, an amazing shot. We follow the yeah, whoosh, whoosh, and then we're in the perspective. Oh, that has so much imp. Okay, hold on. I want to see that. I want to frame a frame. Whoosh, okay. I want to see the, the impact on the other side. Close to the eye, close to the eye, close to the eye, and then here. One. One, and one, and one, and one. Okay, so still on twos. I just beat the the snappiness of it. I was thinking that maybe there were a couple of frames where they animated on ones for that one, but uh, doesn't seem like it. Doesn't does doesn't seem like it. My men, yeah. All right, we will spare you for this. They send out their hostages. No excuses for you. No excuses. Now Ragnar's got the right idea here. We must prioritize saving the. Our, our highness yeah the lie about 2000 not gonna fly and the battle commences okay and then where's the whirlwind of death all right we turn over here we see them prepping the big barrels of something and then thorkel becomes a weed whacker so i just want to i want to see how this works because like ugh, ugh, ow ow oh my god <laughs> like a whirlwind of body parts it's insane it's one of the the most amazing i mean is it is it incredible animation it's pretty good but it's just the the idea of this the fact that he cleaved through two potentially more people with a single strike of a one-handed weapon along with a rather large tree it's a little bit fantastic, you know, but I don't care because I want to believe that Thorkel can do this. I want that insanity. 
it's it's almost guts like right it like just just take the big heavy thing and destroy everything in your path it's amazing Okay, and then the scent catches them, and it is charcoal. The fire is lit. It is lit. Seems primarily, like, uh, intended just to be the smokescreen. As though the flames themselves are not, like... I, I thought they were trying to entrap them. But they have a specific goal within their numbers, which is to save Canute, or to use Canute, to gain him as their own hostage. Hmm. Okay. And we've covered up everything up to that point, so we can just skip through. I love this line from Bjorn where he he says, you do actually trust him. Yeah, you just think that Thorfinn can do it. Regardless of what you say, you can actually trust him. Also, uh, again, it's always notable when it comes up, that's a good-looking fucking horse. Like a believable looking war horse. That's cool. Right? The value of an idiot who's not afraid of anything. Yeah. Must escape. This guy's an idiot. And then he's more of an idiot for yelling that your fucking target is right here. Come get him. We get, we get a group of the worst looking guys come up around. And then a Thorfinn arrives. Almost Dororo-esque with the flaming mane and tail on this horse, which he just lets fly. And drops to the ground in a super badass, like, three-point landing. Yeah. Whoosh. He got some hang time. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, allowed? You're allowed to try. And you're allowed to fail. And then... Yeah, 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 yeah. There's the line. This is, I think, my favorite line in the episode. Why does his highness never get to choose? And so many things play into this because it's not just... It's not just Canute's um, situation or location. You don't get to choose being born into royalty. You don't get to choose any of this, but it also plays into Canute's appearance. Um, and I, I feel like this is somehow more important than I know. Knut was born this way, looking like he does, looking like a, a bishojo, right? Or in, in this case, he is a bishonen, but um, I've, I've I heard from somebody that the author said that he specifically asked Wit Studio to make Knut uh, a, a designed after a bishojo, a beautiful a beautiful girl. That's hard. That's really fucking hard to deal with in a society that respects nothing but strength and grit. It's really difficult to deal with. And in this moment, we understand a little bit more than, than maybe we did before um, the way in which Ragnar cares for Canute. It's, uh, it's more than just a duty to Ragnar. Ragnar really cares. And Ragnar has actually grown on me significantly. I did not like this character when he was first introduced, and it, he, he is growing on me. Uh, I assume he will die soon <laughs> for that specific reason. Um, but definitely growing on me, definitely interested. And then Thorkel appears. We get another, you know, I love, I love respect amongst warriors and waves at him with his hand that he severed the fingers of. No animosity at all from Thorkel. Again, a little bit childish. Just wants to play. Asks the questions, doesn't need the answers. But he figures out who Thorfinn really is. Your mother's name is Helga. I knew them both, and knew them well. That's why you're strong. The only man in the world who is stronger than me. But he says, who is, present tense. So I don't think Thorkel knows that, that Taurus is down. Which is interesting. And he lets them go. Let's do this again. So now we have a setup for another fight. This moment where... <laughs> Where's Thorkel? <laughs> captain! Your highness! Wait a second. You said captain? So you follow... Oh shit! <laughs> it's just goofy. Because how would you tell? How 
how would you know unless you knew the person individually that you're all in armor and rags like nondescript clothing none of you are wearing uniforms how could you tell then we appear and ashalad realizes hey I, th I think i put my trust in the right place no choice but to entrust the prince's safety to you and his eyes narrow and he asks to see the face a beauty who didn't ask for that okay there's a lot to love in this episode not like a super ton of like massive stuff happening because we had this one major plot point that we had to to have occur which is the the attack by ashalad and we wanted that to occur without actually defeating thor uh, thorkel or anything so successful but there's a setup for a future battle and everybody's gonna be ready for it cool very cool all right i think that's all that i want to talk about for this episode if i missed anything or you know just like didn't get anything throw it in the comments if you if you see it and notice it that'd be cool um if you have other thoughts that you want to you want to share throw them in the comments i'd love to read them i i do read all the comments still always please don't spoil stuff i would really appreciate that but um yeah solid episode of inland saga as usual uh Nice. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I've been Tia Boo. This has been Vinland Saga episode 11. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week in the next one. Peace.